Sure, he didn't have a religious discussion with Nicodemus talking about uh, what it is like to know God. He simply said, Nicodemus, to be saved, this is what you need to do. He answered the need of his heart and preached the gospel to Nicodemus. So he didn't have a discussion about whether or not he was from God. He was from God, but Nicodemus came because he needed to be saved. And so that's the, the message that Jesus preached to him. It's interesting when the rich young ruler came to Jesus and said, Master, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus' answer to him was, Hey, you've got to keep all the law and the prophets. Friend, you find that being the gospel anywhere in the Bible? You find Jesus ever saying, Hey, keep the law and be perfect? And then you're, you're, you can go to heaven? Well, it's because He knew the heart's attitude. He knew the question of the man. The man's question wasn't, How do I get saved? That was Nicodemus' question. This man's question was, Master, what can I do to do you a favor? And so here's a rich young ruler that comes to Jesus, and he says, what can I do? And, and Jesus said, you've got to keep the law. And the man told him a bold-faced lie. He said, I've kept all the laws from my youth up. He said, I'm, I'm perfect. And he said, what lack I thereof? And Jesus, well, he didn't, answer, he didn't ask an honest question, and so Jesus didn't give him the answer to his question. Jesus said, go sell your goods and feed the poor, and come be my disciple and follow me. And he went away sorrowful because he knew that he couldn't go to heaven his way. So he thought maybe he could come and uh, do Jesus a favor. He could come and give him a little payment or a pittance and that God in heaven... And by the way, you ever, you ever study that passage? I'm not meaning to preach that passage of Scripture tonight. You ever study that passage of Scripture? Just imagine with yourself the scenario. Here's Jesus, who's the son of a carpenter and who is ministering to rabble. I mean, the, the off-scouring of society is who Jesus preached the gospel to and healed and saved. And here's a rich young man that recognizes the same thing that Nicodemus did, but that, is that he came from God and that he had the power of God. And these folks that have come to Jesus in this scenario, they, they've been fed with the five loaves and the two small fishes. They know that Jesus is God. And so here they've come, uh, and, and here this rich young ruler came to God, but he didn't come because of the needs of his heart. He came because... He wanted Jesus to know how good he was. And he wanted Jesus to know that he kept the law. And then he wanted to uh, make a donation, if you will, to Jesus. Well, what could I do for you, Jesus? And here he is, and he's, he's wearing uh, fancy robes, and he's probably got a ring on his finger, and, and he certainly looks much more impressive than the Son of God looked. The Bible says about Jesus, he had no form of comeliness. Uh, when we see him, there's nothing about him. And I understand it's a paraphrase of the Scripture, and I'm not trying to quote it, so don't get mad at me. But there's nothing about Jesus. The Bible says it will make us desire him. The fact of the matter is he's the Son of God. And so Jesus told him, hey, all right, you want to you get to heaven that way, go ahead and sell everything. Give your goods to feed the poor, come be my disciple and follow me. He couldn't do that because that wasn't what he wanted. There are all kinds of individuals that come to Christ with all kinds of different motives. And that's what we're going to see this evening. Find that these people are seeking to make Jesus a king. And my friend, did Jesus, did He deserve to be king? Yes. My friend, did He have the rank and the qualification? Yes. There's no problem at all with these individuals feeling that Jesus was right to be king. By the way, I don't think that everybody in this crowd all had the same attitude. I think that the Scripture says some of them murmur. Some of them uh, respond in a certain way. But my friend, in all those instances, all these instances, you always find that individuals reject Christ and individuals accept Christ. And so I don't think that probably this whole crowd of individuals following Him had the same heart's attitude, but we find that some of Jesus' disciples had wrong motives. So here they come to Jesus and they say, Where have you been? And Jesus said, You're not looking for Me because you want to know me. You're looking for me because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. <clears throat> Jesus said, the reason you're here is not because you're seeking truth. The reason you're here is because you had a need met. Need met. A need met. You had a, I wonder what a need met would look like. You had a need met. <laughs> and I took care of your need and now... You want some sustenance. You want something from me. <coughs> the interesting thing about it is what they, what they wanted from our Lord and Savior was not, had nothing to do with their lost souls. It had to do with their covetous hearts. And Jesus spoke plainly to them. And He says, You did eat of the loaves and were filled. In verse 27, He said, Labor not for the meat which perisheth. He said, What you want is something that pertains to this life and is so temporal that after a day it will be gone. Now think about the meat that Jesus fed 
uh, these individuals. First of all, we find these folks that are following had quite a bit of time. This, these are some observations, by the way. You can study your Scripture and see if they're true or not. Uh, but please understand, I'm not trying to add or take away from Scripture here, but think about individuals that would have time to just pursue after following Jesus and making Him their King. They're probably not busy in their trade or their occupation. Uh, of course, we know that also the events of the Passover are about to come up as well, and so perhaps that would have something to do with it. But I would submit to you this evening that these folks, when they were fed, and after they were done being fed, the disciples, because there was so much left over, that they uh, took up, what, 12 baskets? I would submit to you this evening, they hadn't eaten like that in a long time. Looking at the history and the culture, particularly of the poor, which would have been a large number of the individuals who followed Christ, when Jesus met their need of physical hunger, they hadn't had their need met well enough that there would have been leftovers. Probably most of them, when they ate, did not eat like many of us do on a regular basis, where we eat until we're full, and then we have leftovers, and we uh, don't even necessarily appreciate everything that we eat. These folks uh, would have eaten until they were full, and I think that probably would have been somewhat uncommon for them. They probably hadn't been fed that way, and to them, Christ meant riches. He meant uh, being physically filled. And friend, I want to say something to you. Jesus is perfectly capable of physically meeting your needs. And there's nothing wrong with trusting Christ to meet your needs. Matter of fact, that ought to be a part of our daily prayer. But friend, I want to say to you that that is not the major uh, ministry of God towards you. And it really is not an important one. And that's what Jesus is trying to explain to them. He says, don't work. Don't labor. Labor not for the meat which perisheth. So what you're working for is temporary. And friend, how long does a good meal last you? How, when you get up and you eat a hearty breakfast, how long is it until you need some more food? At least a couple of days, right? We'll leave it at that. <laughs> the fact of the matter is that when we eat heartily, the more we eat, it seems like the more we have a need of it. And friend, I want to ask you uh, what you're laboring for this evening. Because the more you get of it, the more you'll need it. If it's things pertaining to this life. How much is enough? How much will need, meet your physical needs? You'll always have physical needs, but I'm telling you something, not in heaven. And if you live for this life, and the things that uh, you spend and invest your time in in this life are things that will be left once they're consumed, you'll find that your whole life will be consumed by things that aren't eternal. And Jesus' command, His imperative to these individuals is don't work for the things which are temporary or temporal. He says, but labor for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life. Well, <laughs> for people that are looking to be full, it's a pretty good suggestion, isn't it? Hey, how about work for the things that will keep you full forever, not for the things that will your, meet your needs today. And so he goes on to say, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath, the God, hath God the Father sealed. And I think that probably they haven't understood yet, and they're about to ask an honest question. I think probably they're saying, wow, is he going to send home a fish and a loaf that we can keep in our cupboard and every day pull out and it'll be like the widow's oil? And it'll last eternally? Will it be like the manna that, uh, that God gave us? In, well, they didn't think God gave it to him. We'll, we'll see that in a minute. In the wilderness where every day it came down and just sustained them forever? Is that what Jesus is talking about? So they ask, well, what do we do? They said unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Okay, you want us to work the works of God. You want us to do things that are eternal. What should we do? What's my job? What's my task? Have you found yourself here, Christian? Yes, I'll consider doing the work of the Lord. What is it? What is it? It's interesting that they ask a question... But as we study this passage of Scripture, we find that they don't like the answer. Jesus answered and said unto them, verse 29, This is the work of God, that ye believe on Him whom He hath sent. I think probably we could preach a few hours on that verse. What it means to believe on Jesus whom God has sent. This is the work of God. Jesus said, you want to know what God wants you to do? 
believe on the Son of God. 